Section 33.3, the speed distribution in three dimensions. Let's first look at the probability density function. For this vx, the velocity in the x direction. The function takes this form. Don't worry too much about this normalization factor. It's a constant at a given temperature. Pay attention to this exponential function. It's e to the power of negative kinetic energy over kBT. This is a special case of the Boltzmann distribution. So when you look at this, it indicates that the potential energy is not a factor. And we are looking at the kinetic energy in the x direction only. We have a similar function for the y direction and z direction. Just replace x with y or z. And then let's look at the probability density function for the three-dimensional speed distribution over here. So this is also the probability density function. But now we are talking about three dimensions. We are talking about the speed. Because the motion of a particle in the x direction, y direction, and z direction are independent of each other. So we just need to multiply this expression, this one, and this one together to obtain the probability density for three dimensions. So right here. So the square root of m over 2 pi kBT to the power of 3. And then we have three exponential functions, one in each direction. We can combine this three exponential function together, only because, again, v squared is the sum of vx squared, vy squared, and vz squared. So we got this probability density function. Now let's look at the integral. If we integrate this f with respect to vx, vy, and vz, the result is going to be 1. This means, well, the probability of finding this particle moving in the x direction at a velocity from negative infinity to positive infinity. And in the y direction also from negative infinity to positive infinity. And similarly in the z direction from negative infinity to positive infinity is 1, 100 percent. So again the velocity in any one of the three dimensions has to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. So the left hand side is going to be 1. Similarly the right hand side is also 1. But in this case we're talking about the distribution of the three-dimensional speed instead of velocities. So this v squared is vx squared plus vy squared plus vz squared. And v is the three-dimensional speed of the particle. Now if you look at this volume element, dvx, dvy, dvz. So those are the exact differential of the velocities in the three directions. And right here, you have just one differential, dv. That's the three-dimensional speed. So why can we write this and this and put an equal sign in between? Well, again, they correspond to each other. Over here, we're talking about orthogonal vx, vy, and vz axis, like in this picture. And when we try to integrate all possible velocities, well, we just need to integrate this f function with respect to dvx, dvy, dvz. All right? So imagine this is a infinitesimal cube with three sides, dvx, dvy, and dvz. And then we sum over all possible cubes in the entire space. Now let's look at this function. 
right here, you have 4 pi v squared dv. So what is 4 pi v squared? Well, now this time, let's imagine this v is the three-dimensional speed. Now we can actually draw a sphere with a radius v. The surface area of this sphere is 4 pi v squared. And then, what's the volume of this sphere? This shell from v to v plus dv with a thickness of dv. Okay, we're talking about the volume of this shell from v to v plus dv with a shell thickness of dv. Well, it's very simple. The volume is just 4 pi v squared dv. All right? So this is not the volume in with the traditional meaning. So this is the volume of speed. And then if we integrate this v from 0 to infinity, so imagine we go from 0 to infinity, we also integrate the entire space, but this time with respect to the three-dimensional speed. We'll just copy this uh, f here. That's the probability density obtained from this equation. So we'll put it in here. And then we will obtain the probability density regarding the three-dimensional speed. It's actually this uppercase F times 4 pi v squared. All right? So the product of this uppercase F and 4 pi v squared, that gives us the probability density. And now we'll prove the integral of this probability density as 1 when we integrate from 0 to infinity. When the three-dimensional speed ranges from 0 to infinity. So we plug in the expression of this uppercase F. It's right here. And then we have 4 pi v squared. Again, that's the surface area of this shell. 4 pi v squared times dv, that give us the volume of this shell with a thickness, thickness of dv. How do we integrate this? Variable substitution. We set q to be v times square root of m over 2 kbt. This is just to convert this exponential term to negative q squared. So correspondingly, v is q times this constant. And then we can simplify this integral, okay, this integral, to be this, in terms of q now. All right? And then we combine all those constants and simplify those constants. So outside the integral, this part is equal to 4 over the square root of pi. This is because you have a pi here, and then you have this pi on the bottom to the power of 3 halves. What about this integral? Well, you can use Wolfram alpha to cal calculate this integral. We can also derive this. The result is square root of pi over 4. And then, finally, we find the value of this very complex integral is just 1, or 100%. That just help us verify this f, probability density function, of the three-dimensional speed is correct. So again, to summarize, the probability of finding a gas particle moving at a three-dimensional speed, v, okay, between this v and v plus dv, all right? So this is telling us we have a range for the speed from v to v plus dv. Okay, the probability is then the probability density times the range. All right, the probability density is this f times 4 pi v squared. 
the range, well, is from V to V plus dV. So the thickness is dV. All right. And then again, this is probability density, and this is the formula. By looking at the formula, we want to pay attention to this exponential function here. You notice there's the mass right here. It tells us heavier gas particles have a narrower distribution of speed. And usually, they move more slowly than the lighter particles. So let's look at a few different gases, helium, neon, argon, and xenon. They have different masses. Four atomic mass unit, 20, 40, 132. So without looking at the labels, well, we know this has got to be helium, neon, argon, and xenon. Xenon is the heaviest. Therefore, it has a fairly narrow distribution. And also, on average, xenon particles move slower than all others. And helium, because it's light, if you look at this, this m is small, and you have a less negative number here, and that's why this helium has a wider distribution. And also, on average, helium atoms move faster than neon atoms, than argon atoms and then faster than xenon atoms.